Hello everybody and thank you for being here in this talk in which I will talk about new features in the ADA 2022 revision of the language that lead to more natural looking initialization of data. So normally I would ask you some questions if this were a live presentation so you are going to have to play in your head but basically is this a valid ADA initialization and okay there's a trick but we can agree that this is a valid initialization as long as we are using strings of the same length because in ADA array elements have to have a definite size and also the same size for every element so this is something that beginners struggle with which is that you cannot have this because your strings are not of the same length and the compiler will not accept this kind of array declaration in which the string is unconstrained. So this leads to the typical workaround which is abusing the plus operator for this kind of conversion in which uh, we use another type which is definite as the array element and the conversion is done as I said using this operator. This is normally seen in ADA so it's already part of the culture of the language but is ugly at least in my opinion I think nobody likes to do this in purpose. So let's continue with our suppositions and again if I ask you if this is valid ADA here we have a new string type that is inside the packets I'm using for this experiment with this JSON as a joke of the Spanish transliteration of the JSON uh, acronym and okay you can say say if I define my string like this or as an array of characters okay this is valid but what if I asked you if th this can be done for an for a regular private type and here depending on your knowledge of ADA 2022 you will tell me no this is not valid ADA because it wasn't but it's going to be valid and for the record my experiments are done with GNAT 11.2.3 and with this we can achieve this kind of initialization for private types so in turn this means that we can have an array of this type that can be initialized which is private so it's definite although we don't yet know how to do this and I will show you shortly but what if I told you that this can be achieved not for arrays but also for any kind of type also a private type and to achieve this we need a few new features of the language which are come in the form of aspects and the first one is that for any type you can specify this string literal aspect which in turn binds a function with the initialization in the sense that you will get a call to to the specified function with a wide wide string that is any unicode uh, string and then and there you can convert it to your to your type internal information and what about arrays so there is also this new aspect aggregate which has several sub aspects in which for example you can define an append function which will add elements to your container so with these two new aspects indeed you can have the kind of initialization that we were seeing which is this one the string literal takes care of the strings inside the array and the second aspect the aggregate takes care of initializing an array array like uh, data structure is there something similar for maps in which we have keys and values well there it is and instead of the aspect add unnamed we have the aspect as named and here the function has to have this prototype and well with this we are all set to do that and this leads us to the question which is behind this presentation so there are several text formats to represent information for example JSON with this JavaScript object notation which I must say I think it's not intended for human consumption it doesn't allow comments for example and it's a structure um, data description well structured to some extent because we can have for example heterogeneous arrays 
another equivalent representation this time intended for humans is YAML that is YAML ain't a markup language so we have the running joke a recursive acronym and we can represent essentially the same information that is different kinds of numbers uh, booleans, booleans uh, nested objects and so on then we have TOML which is TOM obvious markup language which I I must tell you is not that obvious once you get um, deep nesting in the data structure and as you can see the differences are minimal there are some quotes quotes around that in some cases are necessary in some cases are not anyway the thing is that this got me thinking if I wanted to represent this information in Ada in a natural looking way could I do that with code that looks like this for example so as you can see here you have maps we have vectors we have mixed types on and on and this is the question I'm going to try to answer in this presentation can we achieve this kind of code in new ADA? and well um, just like, like we saw for initializing strings the first thing that we can clear is that we can do the same for numbers and I think a part of the reasons behind this is that the new big number library which is a standard package in ADA 2022 needs something like this so variables can be initialized without using explicit conversions and just like, like we have uh, the conversion from a unicode string here a string is enough to represent all uh, digits so that's the difference in the prototype of this function which also is good because it breaks an ambiguity here so my first idea when I knew about these aspects and started to play with them is can I do this? so can I have different initializations for the same type with different literals? and surprisingly yes this is accepted by the compiler so now we can write this is it a good idea? I'm not going to enter into that but basically I can initialize with any of those three expressions and it flies by the compiler so that's like that's a step in the direction we want to to go and the obvious idea next is okay if I can use different initializations for the same type what about different aggregates for the same type so we would have something like this and here the bad news begin because this is rejected by the compiler with a quite precise message pointing me to the reference manual which is something that GNAT doesn't do always so it's like saying okay now you are very wrong and the reason is here in the reference manual so so shame on you and actually if you go to the manual indeed it says that you cannot mix that kind of uh, aspects why? Well, it seems logical not to mix vector-like and map-like initialization, but in this case, mm, I don't know why it limit me about this. We will, I will discuss this a bit later. So, in conclusion, mm, this means that I cannot have just one type for the kind of in initialization I'm trying to do. At least I have to split vector and map initialization in two types. So, with this information, I did a first attempt in which we have a basic type or the core type in which we have all the literal initializations and also for example the map initialization and then we have an auxiliary type for the vector initializations and a conversion function that uh, returns the core type from the auxiliary type and with this we are really near our objective because we can have this kind of code which we can have heterogeneous vectors and the only sacrifice is that we have to make explicit that this is a vector and also that those two parentheses are not optional because in AIDA there is a rule that you can omit a double parenthesis when, where there is no ambiguity but here that would mean that instead of one parameter for the function there are three so this is ambiguous so here you cannot uh, remove that and in the end I didn't like this solution because it has an asymmetry between vectors and maps which is 
kind of kind of ugly. Of course, you you could force a map initialization with another auxiliary type. Still, you would have the problem of the two parentheses. Anyway, so I decided to try to continue looking for another solution. So I had another idea, which is instead of having a single type, can we have a single mm, class? Uh, I mean, a single family of types which belong to the same class and so we have the base class we derive from here for maps with their own initialization vectors with their own initialization as we know and since we are doing this for vectors and maps we can have own types for all the rest of the uh, data types around so we, ha we have a bit more of uh, type checking which is also nicer than what we had just before and well apparently this is working well because we can have initializations for each kind of mm, scalar type if we can call strings scalar in this context a vector with mixed integers and strings but what if instead of using variables I use literals well it turns out that for some reason the user defined literal isn't been is kicking here to convert the the literals so okay this doesn't work I'm not sure if it should work but at present it doesn't work and the thing is that you can give a hint at, to the compiler and it will properly convert those those literals so I don't know dubious well when things like that happen with new features I just try to move things around a bit to work around the compiler and so it said well let's try to move the literal initializations to the base type which is the first one that the compiler maybe will attempt to to convert to and surprisingly or not mm, this works and now we can have again this kind of mixed uh, uh, vectors maps maps that contain vectors and so next attempt was okay I can use a vector variable but what if I use a vector literal inside uh, another vector or another map and sadly again we hit uh, an error which is that the aggregate cannot be class-wide and this is not a new error I have seen this before for example in functions that return a class-wide type but, and looking a bit more in detail, what's happening here is a bit uh, counterintuitive because we know that the only type that can be that expression on top is a vector. So it doesn't matter that the placeholder is class Y because we are using an expression that can only be a vector. But I think the compiler is right here because in Ada having a new width cannot change compilation. So although right now that's the only possible initialization for that vector maybe in the future we would have other derived types in the same family class that uh, would be really ambiguous about this so right now I'm convinced that this is actually not proper I would like to discuss this with with a language lawyer but anyway again we see that with a hint this will work and as I said I'd like to discuss about this because maybe in this case this should be should work um, without ambiguity but anyway things as they are now is that you cannot do that so what where those leave us well I have not been able to to solve this this conundrum so right now the best I have is this kind of initialization where you have to make explicit nested initializations for aggregates if they are vectors or maps although for us it's clear that there cannot be ambiguity at least we can get rid in this case right of the double parentheses that we have before so this would be the current result how is this achieved? Uh, here we have a a summary of all the aspects that are coming together to achieve this there is a exception for booleans there is no support for this kind of initialization but you can get around it because false and true are not 
uh, reserved words so you can use them that's okay and well you see how everything works together to that problem of the aggregate that cannot be class-wide um, I can see two solutions at the moment one is to discuss if that restriction is really needed because well it's in your hand to make your maps proper maps or proper vectors but maybe in this kind of situation you want to have both initializations and if that is if there is some alternate motive for that restriction okay another possibility would be that the aspect could be overloaded this is already done for example for indexing so we can index a container with a numeric index a key for example in a map and as we will see indeed with any other type for example a cursor but here I will mm, leverage this to use mm, paths I will see in a moment but the important thing right now is that this constant indexing with a function name actually refers to three different functions while for the initialization for the append if you try to do this uh, the compiler will silently ignore the, f the all but the last uh, matching function and since in ADA ignoring things silently is not normal I'm hopeful that this might be an omission that will be working in the future or at least we, we would get an error that one of those is not being that you have conflicting functions for the aspect because as I say right now only this exists for the kind of aggregate initializations we are attempting now that I have bring, brought up the topic of indexing what if I define this nested vector inside a map and I ask you what's at the position 1 key second index so it seems clear that the answer should be first them and and by using the constant indexing aspect indeed this works out of the box this returns any class that can be indexed again and internally of course we are checking types so this is um, safe at runtime runtime but I also thought okay if I have a sequence of indexes indeed I can represent those indexes in a vector and this vector will work for this indexing I mean this opened the possibility of uh, using building indexes dynamically but what happens if I try to do that directly uh, in an expression with literals and again this fails there is a catch 22 here I'm not going to go into too much detail but if you have a prototype with accepts and a string that string could be a vector of one element but if you remove that prototype with a string it won't recognize it as, as a vector with one element so you cannot do both or even if you remove one of the confliction functions so again you can give a hint to the compiler or the solution alternative solution is to again leverage an operator to build an unambiguous expression and this is I have seen this in, in other libraries, I have done this in my own libraries when discussing, when using for example file system paths which is used the forward slash to denote a path inside a structure so this I think it's a nice solution I, it, I don't feel that this is so abusing as the plus operator at this point you may be wondering why I, why I spend so much energy in this kind of trivial thing and, and well I admit I like to push new features to the limit uh, so why not and the other reason is that uh, well it comes from a liar I, I, in the beginning a liar used ADA code to represent releases so in essence I'd like to have a data structure that can be both compiled verified with a compiler or parsed at runtime and I think this could be useful for tools that are to be used by ADA programmers uh, this is not still in the library of course uh, parsing a subset of ADA might be tricky we'll see if this um, arrives anywhere in conclusion I think that user-defined literals strike a good balance between runaway implicit conversions on or using the ugly 
uh, operator um, all the new aspects come together nicely there is this problem with the aggregate initialization ambiguity um, we'll see if they're one of the solutions that I discussed make into into the compiler that's all I hope you find the talk interesting and I'm happy to discuss uh, anything with you now We have one question from Jeremy Grosser. Is there support for JSON schema? Well, no. Right, right now, the library is just bare bones. The experiments I I have just presented, so there is no loading of JSON or any of the other formats. Although it's an obvious uh, feature that I'd like to have in the future, being able to export uh, the same data I'm initializing this way to be able to export it to JSON, YAML, or TOML, or whatever, or, well, in general, that, that, that kind of text representations. I had another question personally that I thought about while listening to the talk. Um, these aggregates, can they be used during elaboration of the program or do they have to wait until after elaboration no i don't think there is any restriction it's just a normal initialization and in fact in in the code in my library uh, most of the initializations that i used to test these new features are performed during the elaboration of the main main executable all right we have another question now just arrived what other 2022 features are you looking forward let to? me think a bit well obviously the i was looking forward to the parallelism features the parallel loops and this feature i don't know how to how what's the official name but where you have like two or three blocks of code and you execute them in parallel, like do this and this and this, and the compiler will create for you three short lived tasks that don't interact, but it's a nice way to, to split work into several cores of the CPU. I, I think that the parallelism things uh, are the ones that I was most looking forward to. Although I have, I have heard that they are not going to be in GNAT, at least in the short term. And I also like the reduction of containers. When you have a collection of elements and you can apply a function to reduce the container to a result. Those are the features that I, off the top of my mind, I'm looking forward to. Well, that sounds interesting, but um, it goes back to the question of elaboration. I'm not sure tasking will be available during elaboration. <laughs> Maybe that's a question for later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we have another one, another question from Fernando. Um, mm -hmm. Are these techniques, uh, the ones shown during the presentation, currently in use for the ADA TOML package? Well, um, this package is from, uh, it's, uh, I'm not the author. Um, and I don't know, I don't think so. I guess the right now precisely for that package, uh, uh, the author would, would want to have maximum compatibility, not to restrict himself to AIDA 22. Okay, maybe the author of uh, ADA T or the yeah, I, have, I, 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 <laughs> I, I have the name in my head, but I'm, I, yeah. since I'm trying to answer uh, without delaying, I, 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 can, I cannot. It is, difficult. it is difficult to answer my uh, questions. No, no, let, let me. Then we have a, a very interesting remark from Boyan Petrovich, uh, which is not a question, 
I feel that as more aspects like these accumulate in the language standard, the more background knowledge is needed for a programmer to understand what is actually happening behind nice syntax. At some point, my head's going to have no free space left. Yeah, I have to comment, but before, uh, uh, the author of Ada Tom is Pierre-Marie de, okay. de Roda. Sorry about, about the mental skip. Uh, and about this, uh, yes, uh, well, the thing I don't like too much about aspects is that when you use a type which has aspects as a formal for a generic, you are whipping out the aspects. Um, because the aspects don't, ap don't appear in the generic uh, parameters. And so I feel that in some way aspects and generics are not 100% well integrated. But this is probably a minor, um, it, it doesn't come often as, a, as any kind of problem. But it's true that we have more and more aspects every time. And yes. It's that, really, uh, I think that's what you said at the end of your presentation. You have to strike a, a very fine balance between um, easy for the reader and easy for the writer, basically. Yeah, that's true. Um, and in some cases, sorry, go ahead. When you when you write a, a very complex data structure with nested components or whatnot, using all of these aspects, it looks like uh, a JSON data structure, so it's very legible for the human. But then a programmer human looking at this might scratch their head asking themselves what's happening and how all of these get uh, initialized and um, maybe we'll want to attach a debugger uh, in order to understand how these are executed because it's really not obvious. Yeah, mm, the thing is that for some aspects, I think they are very simple to understand. For example, those aspects to to make an initialization for a literal, that's pretty straightforward. But for example, the aspects for iterators are really hard to, I mean, every time I try to use them, I have to go to the basic examples and relearn them every time. For clients, it's not a problem because they just use the aspects and that's okay. Uh, sorry, not the aspects, the, the data types transparently. But for writers, it's really, Mm, not so obvious sometimes, right? right. Again, it's a matter of balance. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, uh, Ada has uh, struck the balance towards the reader. Yeah. And the thing is that, for example, with this uh, integer literal, you can write a universal integer and it will recognize it and use it for the initialization, but you cannot use any other vari variable of an integer type. So that's the limit there. 10 what? seconds. <laughs> um, if anyone wants to join us in the, in the back room, they can now. <laughs>